Alright guys, hope you're having an awesome day. I am Rob Foster, this is Casey Music Talk. Talking with a bunch of musicians in town, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, today we have a violin player and teacher, uh, Destiny Ann Mermegan. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. This should be exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you and I, I don't really know anything about you. We only yes. met a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, we were at uh, Arbucci School. Right. Right, mm -hmm. Michael Arbucci, and uh, we were doing like coaching, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I think the one time we did uh, quartets. Yes, Right. that was fun. Yeah, yeah, and then I think last time I came was the uh, sectionals. Did you come for that one? Uh, I think the I last thing remember. I did was yeah. just the quartets. Yeah. I mean, I have done a few sectionals there before, but mm -hmm. the most recent thing was the court, the ensembles. Yeah, yeah, and you worked with the violins those times? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, so he, like, he breaks them all up into little groups. So, like, I, I've heard a couple of the teachers doing that, but we never did that at our school. Like, that's a cool idea, right? Yeah, I think that is a good idea. I think it really, it's uh, the ultimate in team team building skills, mm -hmm. that kind of skill set. You know, you have to do it in class, like math class, if you're on a project together. But musicians, when you're younger, I feel like don't get to do it enough. So I mm -hmm. think it's really, it's good. I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think especially like in the viola section, and like second violins, you can get like lost in the back there yeah. and then when you're doing these you have to like actually freaking know your part <laughs> you, the, you know you can't hide you, you can't hide anymore yeah right and so like i mean that's got to be pretty valuable to them right i yeah definitely i think he's got a great model going there and i think when i was in high school we we had a separate chamber orchestra and, and we had formed our own quartet um but yeah i'm impressed you know when i lived in dc for many years i didn't quite see as much in the, the public schools with the ensemble training. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. And that was I hadn't seen there's lots there are lots of schools there, so I can't speak for everyone. Right. Um, but it's great that he's doing that. I think it's so helpful for kids to be able to get to work with one another and have to communicate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's hard to communicate nowadays when everything's with a cell phone, so it's it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good to learn to speak. Or even in orchestra, I mean it's it's hard I mean when you have so many people, the conductor Mm -hmm. can sort of communicate and you can yeah. like respond to him and mm -hmm. I guess you're I mean I guess you're tuning with the other I mean you're you're mm -hmm. matching the pitch and you're flowing but it's like it's not what it is in chamber music right no I think yeah. in chamber music you you can't hide yeah. <laughs> I still don't have that stuck in my head you can't hide <laughs> <laughs> yeah so t tell me about you so you said were you in D.C. for a while? Yeah, so I lived in D.C. I'm originally from South Dakota, and then I lived in D.C. and started my career out there. I was there for almost 15 years, mm -hmm. which is a long time to be on the East Coast. Uh, it was fun, but we were also really excited to move back to the Midwest. Mm -hmm. Well, back here for me. My husband is from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's a cellist. He is the cello professor at UMKC, so that's how we ended up here. Uh, when I was in D.C., I taught, I gigged, I freelanced, I did a bunch of educational things with the National Symphony and I played with Baltimore Symphony. Um, I even played with some orchestras in Pennsylvania and I would go up to New York. So, you know, the East Coast, you can, sure. you can travel a lot in Kansas, it's just right. here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did that and I did solos and chamber music and mm. I just did a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's cool. So you, yeah. Yeah, so you played in the symphony mm -hmm. and then, and then so, so high school wasn't in DC. That was in right. High school yeah, was in South Dakota, and yeah. actually, I'm I'm I look back and I I'm really impressed with the music education that we got in the public mm -hmm. school system there. It was really quite good, and even in high school, I feel like we were very lucky. Um, I I think sometimes, like I was saying, alluding to the public schools in DC, you would think, oh, it's the nation's capital. They must have the most amazing music programs in the music schools. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Uh, so there is something really special, I think, about these smaller communities and putting in the effort into their music. That's that's mm -hmm. really nice. Was there a lot? Of, okay, so in in South, where you grew up, were there a lot of other people like you, like a handful of people that were really committed, yeah. had lessons, yep. like yeah. Yeah, I think I 
I was a little late to the game. I had started in the public school system, mm. and then there was the Suzuki program, and I mm-hmm. noticed, you know, when we would have, like, the all-city strings, like they have all-state here, um, I was, like, very competitive very early mm. on, and I was like, I I want to get first chair, and mm. I even thought that when my orchestra director was like, you should take private lessons, I thought that that meant I was bad. I was like, oh my god, I need tutoring, I'm mm. bad. <laughs> it was actually because she thought that I was okay. Right. Um, so... Yeah, I think it just, I was really lucky in high school, and I was lucky to have friends that I could look up to and I wanted to compete with, and I mean, in, in some ways it was almost too small because the, it was our life in a way that I think bred a lot of maybe unhealthy competition at the time, mm. which can happen, but at the same time I wouldn't trade it because I had a lot of valuable experiences, so sure. you know, there's always things you can wish to be different, I suppose. Sure. Yeah, I mean, because I, I was at Chai Mission South here, and uh, and we had a huge program with Mary Lou Jones. We had like 120 kids, and it was, mm-hmm. you know, we had gotten ones for a long time. It's, mm-hmm. you know, pretty strong program. We had five to seven of us in the state orchestra, you know, pretty consistent. You know, we were a yeah. strong program, you yeah. know, and there were, everybody wasn't in lessons for sure, but we had a lot of us, you know, I yeah. mean, I'd say... It was less than 25%, but a considerable people like taking lessons and, you know, it was strong, you know, and, um, there was some, you know, there was some competition Mm -hmm. there certainly. And we were like, I don't know if this is true, but like we weren't strong in sports, but we were pretty strong in fine arts. Like our band was like 240 kids. We had a very large band. We had a very good orchestra. Our theater department was pretty good. You know, so we were, we were like a, a, a fine art school and our sports was kind of, eh, you know, <laughs> our baseball is okay, but, but you awesome. know what I mean? It was weird. Cause like we, yeah. were, we weren't, we weren't shamed for being an orchestra That's cool. at our school. Not at all. Like, nice. like my best friend got, uh, got sweetheart King, which is basically prom King. And he was a band geek. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Good. Like very popular. But anyway, like, so did you guys, so like, so, so you guys said, so the, the, the competition thing, what, what does that mean? What, what do you mean by that? Well, I think, so for instance, here, Allstate, uh-huh. I just, I noticed, you know, these poor students, they, a lot of them will work so, so, so hard and it's like the end of their life if they don't get in or they don't get the chair mm-hmm. that they want. And it's, you know, as a teacher, I try to tell them, look, it's just a moment in time. It doesn't mm-hmm. represent what you're all about. And mm-hmm. It's so hard for them to look past that because it's, it's, you know, it's the only thing that they have right now in their life is Allstate to base things on. And it was the same when I was a kid, you know, we'd have our Allstate or our competitions. And I think it just, it be, was so much of our identity that we became devastated and mm-hmm. crushed. And, and I think being a musician, this is our identity because it's like what you, we do all day long. Mm-hmm. But it's, even as adults, I feel like it's important for us to realize that there are other parts of our identity that we need to value so that if something does go wrong with our music, we're not left at the bottom of a barrel or floor. But there's an analogy that I just screwed up in there. Um, so I try with my students, I try really to, to, especially the ones that are really motivated and any that want to go into music, I try to really make sure, okay, there are other parts of your identity that you need to focus on and make sure that you are proud of so that if something goes wrong in your music, you don't end up like me. <laughs> All sad well, and crying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's a question that I, I just thought of yeah. that I've talked to people about before. So it's like sports is meant to be a competition. The whole point mm-hmm. is to win the game, right? Right. But music isn't like that. It's right. a whole different thing. Yeah. But with, so what's what's your opinion on the making kids do these like little excerpts for six months mm-hmm. and the and, and also the competition chairs thing competition ratings at uh at solo and ensemble and like turning this into competition what what's your what's your thoughts on that of like making this a competition mm-hmm. even though it's not naturally do you think that like hurts them mm-hmm. or helps or what, what do you think about that gosh you know i think it probably really depends on the person i think for some people the competition can probably be good and inspiring. Mm-hmm. I think for other people, it's probably not the right thing and might be why some people quit. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure that I have a definitive black or white mm-hmm. 
I think it would probably depend on the student. I could see some of my students where I might say, maybe you should not do this competition because I know it might not be the right thing for them. But mm. other ones, I could say, well, I think that would be good. For, you know, I think it just depends. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone's so different. Yeah. I mean, you do true. want yeah. to, in this, I guess I will say in this, in competition, the spirit should still be about the music. I don't think it, sure. it shouldn't be about winning. It should right, be right. about communicating your art in the most genuine way possible. And if that gets lost, then what's the point? Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it like, because we, we always want to tell them, or what I would always want to tell them is you're, you're, you're competing against yourself, you know, you want yeah. to keep trying to put that into their heads, even if they can't, you know, they can conceptually understand, like a high school kid could obviously yeah. understand that concept, but it's really hard, right? Yeah. I mean, especially, and I guess like the way we do ours, right, is, is you just get your one, two, three, or whatever rating, and you're not really going up against other people mm -hmm. in, in any kind of a way. Mm -hmm. And even the large groups is the same thing. You're getting yeah. one, two, three, and it's not like a, not like NCAA brackets where you are, you know, where <laughs> yeah. you are like competing against, right. you know? And so, but all state is against, yeah. you know, I mean, that, that is hypothetically against, I guess. And like, I mean, that's because I think my, one of my theories about that is that when you do those ratings, you, cause you mentioned the identity thing where it's like, it, it's not that you, I think a lot of kids think that it's not that I got a three. It's that when I, out of, you know, one being the best or whatever, is that, I didn't get a three. It's that I am a three. Yes. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And those other kids in orchestra, they're the ones. Yeah. Right. And I'm the three. With, like, what do you, what do you think about that? I think that's what kids do, and I think they should. <laughs> but don't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not. It's it's not a representation of who they are as a person. It's a representation of what they put forth in that moment, and there might be aspects about them that are ones. You know, you could, you can't, that's why you, I just, the label of the number and making it yourself is mm -hmm. dangerous. No, it's, right. I feel like it's human nature. It's what mm -hmm. we all do. Yeah, because you said moment in time. Yeah. Right, you know, yeah. it's like, because, I, I mean, do you, do you think that everything is like, everything is like amplified for them. I mean, it is the, the end of their life. Yes. You know, like, <laughs> yes. and, and like now that we're, you know, not 15, right. you know, we, yeah. we're like, no, it's not. Yeah. 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 And the more of those moments you have, you know, they, they might only get the chance once or twice a year, mm -hmm. you know, and you and I have probably had those chances many, many times right. now since when we were in high school. So right. it's hard to keep that perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think the best thing, if I were to give advice to a student, if you get a three, it doesn't mean that you're awful or terrible. It mm -hmm. means that whatever you performed that day could be better according to the judge that listened to you. Mm -hmm. And you have some work to do, but that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm a three. I will never get to the place of being right. a one. Right, right. Yeah. What, what is it that, like, I've always thought about this, like trying to think of like, like almost like a framework rule of like, because giving somebody like a four or five is rough, you know, yeah. I mean, that, that's a rough thing, but I... I, I'm more hardcore. I think I think a three is okay for a judge to give them. Mm -hmm. I, I I think it is like what is. If you ever thought of like what what in general should the kid be thinking about one two and three yeah. at a, at a at this moment in time? What what does that mean? Yeah, have you ever thought of that? Like I yeah. have, and yeah. and I've done some competitions at schools where they actually have the rubric spelled out. Sure, which yeah. is helpful. And then if the right. students know what that is, right? Um, other places there's no rubric and they're just like decide what you want to decide and I would say you know again it depends because you might have somebody who is at a different place in their instrumental life mm -hmm. and they might not be as talented not talented but they might not be as far along sure. as someone is ahead of them so like say the person right before them you know is this amazing talented person who is years beyond them and just plays everything perfectly and nails it. Mm. Well, maybe you have somebody who is just starting out and the piece that they pick isn't that hard and it's more their level, but they play it really, really well. So I'm not going to say, well, you don't deserve a one because you weren't as good as right. this person. You right. know. So I guess when you're judging those things, you sort of have to probably, if you think, get a feel for what that student is capable of right. in that moment and then see if they're, you know, 
getting right notes are a really good thing. <laughs> Correct rhythms are really good. Mm -hmm. Dynamics are a plus. Mm -hmm. um, so difficulty of peace is not a thing. I'm yeah, a real, yeah, like, yeah. I feel like I have a strong opinion about that, and I mm -hmm. didn't realize I did until recently. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I feel like if, if there's a competition, and I feel like this is the way I would hope, well, a lot of major competitions are judged this way. If you play, it's how well you play it. Mm -hmm. Like if you pick a really, really hard piece and you play it poorly, I am not inclined to give you a high score because mm -hmm. you played a hard piece. You played it poorly. Mm -hmm. You should have chose something else. And I've been in competition situations where other judges are just like, well, they picked the harder piece. And I think that's admirable and they, they should be given a win for that. And I... I disagree with that. I think if someone picks something that's a few levels below, I mean, I'm not saying Twinkle Twinkle versus Tchaikovsky Concerto, right, right. but I, I think, you know, if someone plays something beautifully and musically and amazingly well and competently against someone who plays a really, really hard piece not as well, I think the person who played better should win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, maybe like in a Suzuki book, kind of framework you know your your end of book two is pretty easy and that's sort of low-hanging fruit and you mm -hmm. could have handled the sights yeah you know what I mean yeah. and, but you chose to make it really easy on yourself to go for here there is that there's that yeah but you're ready for sights and just to be cool you're trying first in book six or something, you know, yeah. something like that, you know, where it's like you tried a little too right. hard and I think it's a balance. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's maybe one way that people could like think about it in that sense. And so like, I've always thought that like one means you played pretty darn good, mm -hmm. right? You maybe had, you know, one or two little tiny, tiny yeah. screw ups. I think that still deserves a one. I think two means you made some mistakes, mm -hmm. you know? And then I think pretty good though. It was a pretty yeah. good performance. Yeah. Two is not a shabby rating. You right. know, that, that's good. But I feel like people think it is. Yes. And it's yes. not. <laughs> and and I think three means you weren't ready to perform this today. Right. You know, you were about fair. like maybe two months away. This yeah. you know. And then four or five's pretty rough. Yeah. If a judge like is gonna like, go why there. You? <laughs> yeah, you you need to rethink your life. But uh, no, that's brutal. But uh, that that's what I think of when I think yeah. of like a one, two, and three is that three isn't it's not like, you know, like, go rethink your life. It's yeah. like, you weren't ready to do this today. Right. You needed another Yeah, I think bit. that's fair. You know what I mean? Especially if it's out of five. That's totally right, right, fair. Right, And so, like, I... And this is another thing that we've talked about on the show a lot is that I remember one student got a three and, and then... And then some... What was it? It was... It was like, oh yeah, no, no, that's what it was. He didn't get into district in whatever that was, November-ish, mm -hmm. right? District orchestra. And then by the time he got to April or March or whenever the solo and ensemble, he got a three and then he was done. He quit. Aww. You know, yeah. And, and I think he took, he took the, he, he shriveled. Right, he yeah. shriveled up and died, and, and instead of like, so sad. He, instead of, oh, hell no, yeah. you know, I'm gonna, you know, and then his eyes get big, and he yeah. goes, the, no, I'm destroying this next time, yeah. watch. You yeah. know, I mean, you, you know, what What do you think about those kids where you have oh. the, you have the fork, you know what I mean, yeah. when you like. That is so hard, because I've had students who, in the past, I have thought, who have maybe not done well. An example like you just said. And I've even thought, maybe they're not cut out. Maybe they don't. Maybe mm. they should. If Maybe I should let them consider they say they want to give up. Maybe I should let them. But um, I've been pretty persistent about encouraging them to still keep at it. And, and some of those students that even I was like, hmm, have surprised me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm so glad you yep. stuck with it because look where you are now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I have other students who I'll start out with and be like, wow, this person is really going to go places. They're very driven. And then they end up hating it. So it's like, right, right. everyone's so different. So mm -hmm. I, I err on the side now of, of people who want to quit. I'm always like, you just, you just give it a little more time. Mm -hmm. Just don't. Cause everyone I've ever talked to, and I don't know about you, 
who is an adult now and played a string instrument in school is like, I regret quitting. Mm -hmm. They all regret it. I've had tons of yeah. people say that to me. Yeah. So I just try and really encourage yeah. them and let them know, like, just, it's kind of like, you know, psychology, right? You mm -hmm. become a psychologist. Like, this doesn't mean that the rest of your life is going to be this way. You have it in your power to work harder. And I give them, sometimes I'll do like a, okay, you've been talking about quitting now for the last few months. How about you stick with it through X? Like, I'll mm -hmm. give them kind of a goal post mm -hmm. to set. So I'll think in advance, okay, what goal post can I give them that I know that they'll probably meet? And then they'll be like, okay, cool, I'm not going to quit. Right. So it's kind of a little bit of that planning as a teacher what to right how to guide them but yeah districts and it's hard yeah i've been frustrated with that kind of like the hardest thing i've ever had to play was the viola don juan excerpt mm -hmm. you know it's it, it was it was rough you know that yeah. that packet it was it was the uh what's the um that Mozart excerpt. Yes. So there was that one. There was a Beethoven five uh -huh. for viola, Don Juan. You know, there's a handful of pretty pretty rough excerpts, and that's some of the hardest stuff I've ever had to play. And that a packet took me a year, you know. Mm -hmm. And I got it. I got it playing pretty well, but like, I was like, I I was done with that. Mm -hmm. All of that. The <laughs> solos, the solo pieces were really fun. And, yeah. But like now, I go learn. Folsom Prison mm -hmm. and uh, take the A train and uh, peaceful, easy feeling eagles. Yeah. You know, like th these tunes that I can go to jams and play right. them for another nice another forty years, right. uh, many times. Right. And then when I go back to the excerpts, like I get the I get the technique of it. Yeah. I'm way better now that I played those yeah. excerpts. Way better, mm -hmm. and I don't regret not playing them. But mm -hmm. that. Do you, th okay, here's a question. Do you think that doing that style of music learning of the excerpts and stuff, do you think that turns off a lot of people? I think it can. Mm -hmm. um, I think it can. Uh, I was just thinking, I had a thought when you were saying that, so I'm trying to like answer mm -hmm. this question with that thought too. <laughs> I think- I'm gonna play these a lot. Over yeah. my life, you know, yeah. I don't know if that was, but like, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's it's so hard because, you know, each state and all state and districts and school districts and everything, and they do all these things. It's it's like a model that that is established to give to kids for things to work on to improve, and it's mm. good that they have these opportunities. But the flip side is that I will notice excerpts like if a kid really wants to do all state and the excerpts are like excerpts that i auditioned on for baltimore symphony mm -hmm. and they're like in suzuki book four and they want to do so it's like they they like beg to do all state i think it gets dangerous when a student is not at the level of the mm -hmm. excerpt because then what i see is they get this expectation well oh i i can play through it but it might not be in tune it might not be rhythmically right. accurate they might just be playing through it and somehow that's good enough mm -hmm. and that's the real world's not like that like mm -hmm. orchestral auditions aren't like that like it it has to be perfect right and, right. and even if it's perfect you still might not <laughs> advance right. Right. so it's it's hard because you know you want them to do these things I want to support them to do these things I think these things are great but at the same time it gets difficult when there are students that aren't ready for it sure and so it's it's just a balance trying to teach them in a way that makes them grow as a player and still allows them to do these things. And it's just, it's different for every student. So it's literally like finding a reinventing the wheel, I think for each student. Yeah, sure. I've been thinking so much about motivation the last like 10 years now that I've been teaching mm -hmm. and how, how to like deal. Cause I, I think that's the, like the end all be all of what, what we're doing. Like it, it's like, or that, that fixes like all problems. <laughs> and, and it's the question that yeah. is, I'm not hearing from a lot of teachers, I haven't heard a satisfactory answer from like, cause this is a hard question, yeah. you know what I mean? It had a, like you, you kind of, you kind of were saying that every kid's different. And I think that that is definitely true to an extent. And so the motivation question gets really gray and mu you yeah. know, is a, every kid's gonna, yep. you know, take, so I, I always ask questions that nobody has a good answer to. And that's, that's why I'm great. asking them, you know? And it drives people nuts, but, uh, and it drives me nuts because I never hear a good answer. Yeah. So, like, but, like, so with the kids, like, 
the reason why I asked you about the the excerpt kind of stuff is I, I think the pushing of that so many people I've heard where they had like the tiger mom and she's, you know, <laughs> slam this, you know, that thing on their hands, piano play, yeah. you know, where, where they're just drill, 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 drill. And, and like, there's a lot of people that like really get turned off by that. Yes. And then, but there's a lot of what you were just describing a minute ago where you're like, this happens to me at gigs every third gig at least if somebody comes up I started in fourth grade but then I quit I I wish my mother would have kept me playing and you're like you were a pain in my ass (laughs) you know what I mean the mom's like like you wish I would have made you really you know what I mean like like they're like yeah son of a bitch (laughs) you know like and so and so I'm like sitting here trying to figure out what the motivation is so so here's my question about the kids today are you noticing any trends with the kids today maybe compared to like when you were at school yes yeah like what what is that uh the biggest thing i notice is the need for instant gratification mm-hmm. thanks to technology mm-hmm. and it, it's it's like string playing doesn't it doesn't work like that mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't even work like piano when you first play piano you play the note and it sounds and if your piano's in tune, the note's in tune, mm-hmm. and like you hear it. Yep. But you know, when you pick up a string instrument and you put the bow on the string for the first time, usually it doesn't sound that great. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just, I just, I feel like, oh, if only they realized, if only they realized, mm-hmm. they just had patience. I think patience is a trend that is really lacking today. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to fix it. I think it's just the way society is. I think students can have teachers that remind them that the instrument is not like that and can tell them, you know, you've got to try and your progress is going to take time to get the gratification and just constant reminders. And what I'll do with my students sometimes is I will record them the very first time they play a song for me or a piece mm. if it's out of Suzuki I call when it's out of Suzuki book one then I start to call them pieces because <laughs> they're all like folk songs and Suzuki and book one. yeah um, and then what I'll do is like when they're when I think okay they're probably going to get passed on passed this week mm. I'll record them and sometimes we'll sit down together because they are with themselves every day right. they don't see the progress like right. I can see the progress or you would see the progress and right. then I'll show them and they'll be like wow, mm. I really sucked when I first played this. Yep. It's better. And I'm yep. like, this is how it works. See how mm. much time it takes time. So that's been helpful. Yeah. That's a little you're, you're a big fan of recording them. I am. Yeah, yeah. If they yeah. allow it. I'm a big right, fan right. of, well, in moderation. So some students, you know, if you tell them to record themselves, it's like very devastating yeah, and yeah. can be very traumatic. So if I sense that with a student, We'll do it together in a lesson, and I'll mm. explain to them, okay, this is iPhone audio. This isn't how you would actually sound with nice microphones. Right, right. This is only good for listening to intonation. Right, right. And it's like, I don't let them do it alone. <laughs> I like yeah. try to protect them, because when I first did it, I was... Sure. Like, a eighth grade girl, I bet would be just freaking devastating. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's yeah. so much, like, judgment and bullshit. You know, know. like, yeah, so, like, yeah, so you, you so... Not literally every lesson, but you're gonna do it. You're you're gonna pick certain times. Yeah, and, and occasionally. You, you find some huge value. If in I that, if yeah. I find that the yeah. student is game for it, and I think that they're in a mental space where they can handle it, mm-hmm. I'll I'll suggest it. I, yeah. I, bleh, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, so here's another question. I found that when when you when you and I grew up, we had this massive amount of really good pop music mm-hmm. you know even from the 70s and, and you know my I you know grew up in that all of that really pretty good 90s music you know the pop music was still decent in the 90s and and, and the radio was very strong like in the sense of uh, influencing culture mm-hmm. you know and so when we when we grew up I got the sense that everybody had like a favorite song and a favorite thing with music. Yeah. When I ask my students today, obviously there's a little bit of time where they're all going to be way too cool for your questions. Like you ask them, you know, yeah. what, so what's your favorite band? And they're like, oh, oh, oh. You know, there, yeah. it's, there's some of that, but I don't get the sense that it's on a, that. It's only that. I, I get the sense that like a lot of them 
some of the students I have, I don't even, I'm not convinced they like music. Mm, which would then get in the way of motivation. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. I don't, like, like, I get the sense that most of my students, what happens with me anyways, is that about 70% of them stay with me two to five years. Like mm -hmm. many, many lessons. The parents like me. Yeah. I can tell they like me. It's going very good. Like we have a long-term thing. And then about 30% of them have a couple weeks or whatever, and it's not right for them. Yeah. But I get the sense that there's like, of the ones that stay, there's about 30% of them that are really like practicing a lot and they're really going for it. Not even to make it a career, but they're trying very hard and they're getting way better. And then the other 70% like me, they like playing, but they just don't do very much work. You yeah. know, I mean, they just don't practice like everybody, yeah. you know. Um, and so like, I just get the sense that when I when I'm listening to music, I like love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, like I'll listen to like like uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers mm -hmm. bass line, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. and I'm like head banging to it, and I'm like, and I just don't know if I get the sense that they do that. Yeah, That's have you noticed that? Yeah, it makes me wonder because. I have asked students, you know, okay, what do you like besides classical music? And they'll be like, I don't know. I mean, I like everything. And when I was a kid, I totally, I was like, I love country music, you know? Mm. I had an answer right away. Right. Um, and I just, I, I, you know, I, I feel like part of that is, as a society, we have become a lot less musical in general. Mm. Um, as far Talk as classical, <laughs> yeah, as far as classical music right. and... The, like the fine arts, that those that kind of music, opera mm -hmm. and even Broadway is not mm -hmm. as big as it used to be. And I think if the more that they're exposed to it as kids, mm -hmm. the more they're going to identify with it mm -hmm. and find that they like it. And so I think it's an exposure. Part of it's an exposure issue. As far as what I think motivates kids, I think what you're saying is if, if they love music or they like it, then they're going to have at least some sense of motivation. Mm. And I always say like my students who do like music and who are really struggling, they're like, I don't feel motivated. I'm like, well, you know, sometimes you just have to practice and then the motivation comes. It's like mm. that with many things in life. Like sometimes I don't feel like brushing my teeth in the morning, but I know I'll get cavities. So, sure. so I like start brushing them like, okay, this isn't so bad. Right. It's a very basic example. But I think a lot of times I always believe that motivation follows action. So mm -hmm. if I'm really feeling like not wanting to do something, I try really hard to make myself do it. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, now I want to. Mm -hmm. So it what, works. What, like, do you, I always got a sense, and this is, this is another topic that we didn't write down here, but I've, I've heard a lot of teachers... You know, they're, they're not only two categories, but there's kind of the drill sergeant mm -hmm. kind of types that are like, I don't like the other cello guy who was a little bit tall. I don't know if you saw him. He was at, it was at Arbucci's. He's a drill sergeant type. I can tell by just okay. two sentences of him talking. He's like, I don't care if they don't like it. You know, yeah. you're going to do this, these scales and these modes and you're going to, if they don't, then they're gone, you know, like, mm -hmm. and then you have all the other teachers that are kind of like, the more the motivation, not necessarily they need to like me, but they want the kid to really like playing music. Mm -hmm. And I found that these, that the first group, all the students get really good, mm -hmm. but they might like be done after a while, yeah. you know, but this crew, they kind of like it, but I found that the kids aren't very good though. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. there, there's like the, I, I found that there's a little bit of balance there, yes. you know, of, I think it's a balance. of how much, like how much fun you need to have, but how much, like how much drilling you need to do because of what you just said is that I wonder if a lot of the motivation is because they know that they're doing something now. Mm -hmm. Like when they get into something like end of, end of book two, you're playing like two page tunes now, mm -hmm. or if you're. Like if you're in fourth, fifth grade and you're by eighth grade, you can feel it. Like you're kind of mm -hmm. doing stuff. You're getting yeah. in shifting. Yeah. You're getting, you know, like, and do you think that that adds a lot of the motivation that they I feel so. like I'm actually, I don't yeah. suck at this thing. Yeah. I think know? when they can actually see measurable progress, that's very motivating. Mm -hmm. I think what you're saying about the two different teacher camps, I personally, 
I think it's what you're saying about balance. I think you really, you have to be able to balance. I'm not, like, I'm not one way with every student, mm -hmm. different with every student, and I'm not a drill sergeant with every student, nor am I just like, hey, free love, <laughs> you right, know? Right. Like, I try to, it's a balance, mm -hmm. it's a balance. Yeah. yeah, and the question, so here's another one of those questions that I always want to ask that nobody has a good answer is, how do you know which kid? Yeah, and that that's like, you know, the, there's some, like in the sports world, there's Chuck Daly and Phil Jackson. There's these famous coaches that like, they were just people, people, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they yeah. can just read guys and yeah. they know they have this whole book in their head and they know that paragraph I need to say to that guy right now. Yeah. And, and they could just feel and vibe that. And I'm bad at that. I'm terrible. And I want to know which one I need to kind of like kick them in the butt today yeah. and which one I need to, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and like, that's the question that nobody can give me a good answer to is like, how do you know which, you know, how, which kid, what's the marker that I could look for, uh, you know, to know, to come at them hard. Yeah. Age can be something. You can't do that to a six year old, right. you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. the kind of freaking questions that I want to answer. Nobody can give me a good answer, yeah. you know? I feel like, do most people say what I'm going to say is that it's kind of a vibe thing? Is that what they... Well, yeah, yeah. But, but how do you know the vibe? Is It still leads to another question, yeah. you it's know? Yeah, like the Big Bang Theory, what made the Big Bang? Right, right, um, right. I think, you know, if you can't tell, or you have students where you might be unsure, I would, I would say try. Try to drill sergeant them during a lesson, see how they respond, maybe let them sit with it for a week and see how they come back the next week. Mm -hmm. And if they seem more distant the next week, maybe it was too much, mm -hmm. you know? And then you're screwed. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that, I know yeah, it's yeah, a risk. Like, yeah. You don't want to make yeah. them hate you in one lesson. Right. I just, yeah. yeah. I think if you, maybe if you have somebody long enough and you've established a relationship of, of trust, feeling free to like push that envelope to uh -huh. see how they respond. But then a lot of your energy then is going to be dedicated towards seeing how they respond versus whether or not they're playing in tune, I suppose. <laughs> right. Do you think, like, I'm sure you had students like this that are very, very unsure of themselves. Yes. You know, like, and I have had a couple of, a couple of, like, middle school girls who have been like that where everything was, I don't know, and, and, you know, they, you know, and, they, and like, would that, would that be a general marker possibly a general marker that, yeah, me coming really, really hard of, again, again, you know, and, yeah. and go, yeah, that would probably be, I probably, yeah. would, you think I that? Think, it, yes. Yeah. I mean, I think your senses about that, you're probably not bad at it. You probably just, mm. your senses are right on. Yeah. I think it's just, it's hard because there are students where I want to say more and uh -huh. I, I find myself holding myself back because, yeah. you know, I can see if I say something to one student, their face starts to get red and then I'll see them like twitch a little bit and I'm like, okay. I'm pushing them too much, you know, yeah. it's like for the little smaller ones. Sure. Um, when they're, when they, when they're on the verge of tears and when they cry, that's a good sign. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> have you, have you, have you ever had students cry? All the time. <laughs> but not because I mean or make them. I think they just feel really comfortable. You can tell yourself that. No, <laughs> no, kidding. really. It's not even about music <laughs> stuff. Um, mm. but I have had one student who, who I was pushing mm. and I thought it was okay to push and she was younger and mm. she started crying and I felt bad, but we fixed it. It was a good experience for both of us. So, you right. know, it, it's not a, it's not foolproof. Yeah. Yeah. But I cry all the time too. So <laughs> it's like, we were just all a bunch of crying people. Yeah. And, and for any, for anybody watching, obviously when I say things like drill starting and go hard, I mean, you're not yelling, right? You're not, right. you know, I mean, yeah. there, there's a reasonableness there, you know, but like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say like, I'll say stuff to my students once in a while, I'll say something like, like, n no, like, do, do that again. You got this. Yeah. You, you can do this better. Come on. Let's, let's do that. You know, yeah. and they, they tell I give a shit, That's you know good. what I mean? You know, yeah. but, but I'm not, but I'm not letting them get away with stuff. Yeah. You know, like, and so I think there's a, a balance there of, of they know that you're not screwing them around. Yeah. You know, they right. know you want them to do good and right. you know that, that I think they can feel it that, yeah. you know, yeah. And I, so like, yeah, anyway, that, that's just, uh, I ask a lot of questions of stuff that's in my head, you know, that's that I'm great. struggling with. What, what are some things that you've like learned teaching mm -hmm. 
maybe not even about other people or about yourself. You can answer it however you want, I guess, but like. I have learned a lot of times if I, when I started out teaching when I was much younger and a student was upset or something didn't go well, I would actually put a lot of it on myself. Mm. Um, because in my head, if I put it all on myself, then I could fix it. Mm -hmm. And it, it mm -hmm. took, you know, it took me like maturing over the year. Like I started teaching when I was in high school, which mm -hmm. is really early. Um, yeah. But once you realize, no, it's not all about you. <laughs> it's actually a lot mm -hmm. of it's about the student. Then that opens up a lot of space in the brain to actually figure out how to help them help themselves more. Mm -hmm. Rather than like thinking, okay, what am... I mean, of course I'll think, what am I, how can I help them? What am I doing and what am I saying to them and how is it affecting them? I'm not saying, like, you have to think of that. But if they play a note out of tune, it's, I wasn't responsible for it. You know, they played it out of tune. Mm. So then when I realize, okay, I'm not responsible for the fact that they just played a note out of tune, then I, like, my head is clear and I can help them fix it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yep, it makes exactly yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, I, I, recently uh psychologists are talking a lot about like external intro control right, right. Like, and and like how and there's some people in the world that my life is crappy which one of you is to blame on everything yes. you know they're, they're yeah. just blame 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 and then there's other people that go the other side with what you're just saying is that i take it all yeah and it's all my and the the advantage or the the good thing about that is that i feel like i now have control over it if yeah. it's my fault, then I yeah. can do something. And right. I, I've been struggling with that for mm -hmm. like 15 years yeah. of, of this. There's got to be something I can do. That phrase mm -hmm. goes into it. You know, there must be. Right. And like, and so like, so you're talking about stuff, not only musical things, but I'm fascinated by all the stuff that has nothing to do with music that 100% affects our lessons. Yes. You know, like yes. I'm fascinated by that stuff and like, and Cause, cause like, man, I, I've played since three and I'm not good enough for the symphony. That's like the NBA, you know, like, like the, and so like, so I'm sitting here always thinking like, what are we doing here in this lesson? You know, I'm thinking on like a, like a past meta level, like above <laughs> meta, you know, like, yes. you know, like, or, a, right. or macro, a yeah. past a macro, like, like, what are we doing here in this lesson? And the only thing I've come up with is that this is, this is for like, adult life skills mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah, like, not make excuses show right. up on time yep. time management you know all those kind of it's things a lot of self-discipline you know yes. and, and so like i want i actually I'm, I'm a complete psychopath in the sense that i want to do psychology stuff with them and mm -hmm. life coachy stuff yeah. with them but this is another question that there's not really a good answer to but where where's that line mm -hmm. how much do you talk about you know yeah. like and the, the, so you mentioned the, the, the crying mm -hmm. and how much of that is really on you. Well, the 15 year old and her boyfriend broke up with her at school. That's not, yeah. That has nothing, right? To, right? right. Like, but that's like a hundred percent affecting your motivation. And right. like, so like, yeah. have you had to deal with that in your lessons? Yeah, I uh, think I've always, when I teach, I've always especially with, you know, female students, it's always like I'm their big sister or a mother figure mm, for them. And, yeah. and I think for my male students, I'm like a big sister or, mm -hmm. and I, I like taking on that role because it helps me to understand them more. But there have been experiences where they've confided in me things that, you know, sometimes when people say things, you have to look at it very almost clinically. Like if I were a doctor in an office mm. and a student told me they were thinking of committing suicide. Oh, it's wow. my responsibility to either let their parents know who, if, if I know that their parents mm. are functioning human beings or tell a school counselor if mm. they don't have good support. Yeah. You know, I think that's obviously like going, that's the an yeah, extreme that's the example. Yeah. That's the extreme. Um, but as, as long as I, I can get the sense that they're not doing anything that's hurting them, like they're not hurting themselves sure. or any really serious, things um I, I i tend to keep a very open ear and i also let them know that what they say is confidential and i've actually i've gotten into the habit of 
when students start to open up to me, I'm, I tell them, you know, anything you say is confidential, but if, if I hear anything like you're thinking of hurting yourself, right. we're going to have to, I say, we are going to have to probably let someone know sure. it's just so that they're, yeah. you know, um, and then I feel like I've done my job to sort of so set boundaries. my boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they also appreciate actually the boundary being set yeah. in a way. Yeah. People like students like boundaries. Yeah. Um, well, they know what this is. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's, you know, it's hard when students, like, you've got someone who really cares about music and they're crying because they think they suck. Right. Right? Like, I'm like, I can relate to you. It's okay. Right, right. <laughs> um, so then yeah, that's, that's like you, 60% of musicians yes, going it's like, you all feel this way. I know. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, of course I feel like it's on me and I want to help them and yeah. help them fix it. But um, also, for me, like, realizing that them telling me what they're experiencing with music and feeling like they suck... I know that they also have other things going on. And so when I'm able to mm. tell myself that, it lets me step outside of it just enough, mm. I think, to be able to advise them better. Right. Because when you make it personal and about yourself, it's very hard to advise people with a clear mind. I yeah. Think. So. Yeah. You, you were mentioning other stuff. Like, um, I had a student recently where she was, this was her fifth SAT she took. Mm. And, but for good reason, like she's trying to get into a really good school, yeah. you know? And so she, she had already gotten at least like a 31 or it was a, or no ACT because she already got a 31. And so she was trying to get, wow. and so this wasn't, she sucked. This yeah. was like, and, and she was saying that she was doing like really good in like tennis. She was on varsity and stuff. And, and this was like. I got the sense that music was a little bit extra, but she was still pushing. She was one yeah. of those overachievers that go, you know, that go hard mm -hmm. and everything. And she was going into college and, and she was, uh, she, yeah, she was a junior. So she was right at that mm -hmm. looking for colleges and stuff. And I got the sense that this music, she liked it, but this was a means to a college end mm -hmm. of, of having it, you know, extracurricular on your, yeah. so there's a lot of things that I found that of why people are doing this right now. And mm -hmm. I think she liked it, but I don't, I'm, I think she said that maybe I'll be very interested in playing like in the orchestra at college, but not take lessons. So yeah. you could tell that this was fun. She liked it, mm -hmm. but you were saying about the other activities where I've been, I've been asking people this for 10 years that's drive drives me nuts and I always talk about this where the the mother was like you know the kids in for at least four things and she's like oh well it's okay because volleyball ends on Tuesday and soccer starts on Thursday and you're just like oh my god man yeah. like you, you just have your kid doing yeah. something every freaking hour of the day and then you know and and so that's the kind of stuff of what I'm talking about when like what because you you mentioned an extreme with like like suicide or yeah. something you know but i'm talking about like when do i step in and let them know that that you know if you want to be a multi-person mm -hmm. of of interests or whatever do whatever you want mm -hmm. but if you're gonna play college soccer mm -hmm. you gotta like start when you're young mm -hmm. you gotta be you, you don't have to do that every moment of the day, but right. you got to make a, like a major commitment, mm -hmm. you know? And, yeah. and when do I step in to again, be life coach where I'm not like screwing with their life and right. kind of have that come to Jesus right. meeting with, you know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, do. Sort of, yeah. I do. I think it depends on the maturity level of the kid. So I, I have, I have a sophomore and this person's interested in going into music and I'll have that talk, like, I have just recently had the talk, well, okay, if you're interested, you, you really have to start practicing more, you know, an hour days. I mean, you could still go into music, but you're not going to be as far along as other people. Mm -hmm. I just try to make it very logical. I'm like, okay, well, let's say yeah. you and someone else who's a sophomore both decide that you want to go into music. Sophomore A starts practicing four hours a day. You practice one hour a day. Chances are, sophomore A is going to be farther ahead than you. Right. So I try to put it in perspective for them to see okay, this is how far ahead I'll be. Because I also feel like people bloom at very different times in their lives. You sure. know, some people, when they get to college, really take off and didn't do anything in high school. Yeah. And then they become, have successful careers. And other people peak when they're very young. Um, mm -hmm. I have a, a very young student, an eighth grader, and she is interested in going into music, 
but she's very smart and mm. does so many things. And we have had the conversation, like, you know, I, I want you to do many things because you're young and you still need to figure out what you like, but if you really, really like music, you know, maybe we can compromise. Maybe you can still do this thing, but take this one off the table and, and see what it's like to practice more and see if you actually do like it. And then if you like practicing more and you decide you want to do it, then great. And maybe that's a way to find out that you don't. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's like helping them, I think wording it so that they feel like it's in their court mm -hmm. makes it really yeah. useful. Yeah. Cause it's your idea. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. 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 Cause then it's not like you're responsible. Cause is that, is that where the real motivation comes when it's them? I think so. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. You know, my husband, he, his uh, father insisted that all the kids play instruments mm. and he was the only one that ended up continuing with it. But he jokes, you know, he's like, I, I hated practicing mm. in high school. I didn't sure. want to do it. Like I hated it. My, yeah. you know, my dad made me practice and come to my lessons and it was annoying and I hated it. But then I got to college and all of a sudden I like fell in love and the bug bit me and then the rest was history mm -hmm. and yeah. he's had a really great career. So it's just, it's, see was some of that because he was good. Because um, he had some talent. I mean, he'd been he playing was, for I think he was naturally long. talented, yeah. but he claims he wasn't super in high school because yeah. he really didn't practice that yeah. much. And, but then he worked his butt off yeah. in college. So, you know, what's that thing like if you're an expert at something? The 10,000 hours. 10, hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, yeah. I think there's an advantage to starting young, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I don't think people who are older are done for. I mean, I've seen mm, plenty of examples sure. of people who like really start focusing in their twenties and right. are concert masters and orchestras. So yeah. Yeah. What do you think about, uh, parents making their kids do it? That's such a good one. I, so I was very, my parents were crazy. Um, they had a whole lot of issues and they <laughs> didn't like when I did homework or practiced because they thought that I should like be sleeping and going out and having fun. So mm. I rebelled against that. And yeah. I was like, well, I don't like you and I'm going to do the opposite of what you say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I was like, well, I chose to play the violin. I wanted to play the violin. The violin got me through a lot of hard times and traumatic things in my life. It was all me. And that's where my motivation mm -hmm. came from. But then I hear stories of people and kids who hated it, but their parents forced them. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up loving it. Right. Just like I hear those kids hated it, their parents forced them and they still hate it. Or they like it, liked it, their parents forced them, then they hated it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Right, right. I mean, in general, if it can come from the kid, I think that's best, sure. always. Yeah. Um, I think... So your parents wanted you to, like, maybe in so many words, relax more. Yeah. You, you know, you, yeah. you were really driven, I, industrious, yeah. conscientious, yeah. all that kind of... Yeah, 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 that's interesting. Yeah, they were big hippies into, like, drugs yeah, and alcohol. Yeah, they yeah, probably yeah. wanted me to hang out with them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so here's another question. Like, so, the, there's a lot of, with kids today, I've found that back back in the day, there was much more, like, hardcore attitude with kids. Like, no, you're going to do it, that's yeah. it. There's no negotiation, yes. there's no talking me out of it, you know. Right. And I, I've, I've, like... I have a really different opinion about that now. And, mm -hmm. and like, I think in my twenties, I, and earlier on, I, I kind of saw the value of certainly kids need time to be creative mm -hmm. because that's one thing that is really bad today is that they're all like, is there is a lot of structure and there's no like free play right. in a psychologist sense. Like man, yeah. there's many studies that are on yeah. the, the value of that. Um, but there's, I'm seeing now how stuff like sweeping, right? And learning your math and like, you know, there's these certain things that... Did you say sweeping? Yeah, yeah, like, 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 like chores. Oh, okay. and, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, like the uh, mowing the lawn, yes. like, they're, they're like uh, learning your math, writing, you know, there's, there's these handful of things of baseline, like yeah. adulty things. Yes. And my theory now is I'm... I'm leaning more back to the old school now mm -hmm. that I don't really give a crap if you don't want to sweep. You're yeah. gonna do. It. Yeah. You're gonna do it, and and it's it. I think that the hippie kind of thing that you're talking about is much more of a, you know, well, just live, man. If the kid wants to, you know, and, they did and, name me destiny. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. So, 
Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 the, I'm, I struggle with that because again, I'm asking where the perfect line is and there's right. no right answer to this, but like, but I'm leaning back towards a little bit more of that. I don't care if you don't like this yeah. because, because you need to learn how to count money. Right. You need to learn out of the end because yeah. I, you're nine yeah. and I'm an adult and yeah, I don't care if it's not right. I think I'm right. I so, think, you know, I think there's so much value in that and boundaries. I think kids today, the, I'm not a parent, but I know what bad parents are because mm. I had them. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> um, That's it's okay. I talk about it all the time on my channel. I'm not a mean daughter. They were just not well human beings. I'm sure they had their good parts about Shut, them, but shots fired. Um, kids need boundaries and structure and, and I actually think, you know, people look at playing a musical instrument like more of as like a hobby, which is okay. But I, I would I think it would do our culture so much good if if kids actually had to pick a musical instrument or switch, but just mm. had experience with a musical instrument at least up until college. Mm. Nothing I don't think anything bad would come of it. Mm. Just because you're, you're learning like the discipline and you're learning the creative arts and music is healing mm. and there's so many good things that can come from it. And I'm not saying everyone needs to go into music or be a musician or even practice hours and hours a day. Right. But it would be nice if, if everyone could have some kind of fluency and some, some art form like music or drawing mm. or singing, you know? Yeah. And, and I think parents teaching their kids like, okay, you have to brush your teeth. It could kind of be the mm -hmm. same way with music. Like, this is good for you. It's like eating vegetables. It's healthy. Right, it's right. good for your psyche. Like, learning math so you know how much money you have in your bank account when you're 50. Right. It's kind of the same. Like, learning a musical instrument, you're going to learn how to express your emotions. Mm -hmm. So, I'm a huge... Yeah. I, I love teaching and I love music education. And I just wish, wish there was more of it. Right, right. I heard this quote the other day where this guy said, today's, uh, today's parents are... are, are are so good at obeying their children. You know, oh, like, I know. You know, it's crazy. You know, like, and so that's kind of what we're saying is that we just need to let everybody be free yeah. and you can, you know, and, uh, and like, there's some of that, there's some, there's slam the piano key, you know, tiger moms and stuff like that, that do go too far. Yeah, but, some but there people is, definitely go too far. What, what pisses me off is it's just like the, it's just like the external, internal control like yeah. there is a too far both ways yes and, and I think there's a too far both ways where you know you make them everything right and they either end up loving it or they they hate your guts right and, or there is a too open yes I you agree. know there's like orderliness and then openness yeah. and the personality traits and there is too open yeah I you know that. and that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't want to excuse me don't they don't want to uh like it meant to. Are you gonna edit my burp out? Well, Sorry. Mm, that that <laughs> happens. Um, I'm hungry. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, no, but you're right. Yeah. You're right. I think. I think. I feel like the motto of this whole talk is like balance, like coming mm -hmm. in from the extremes and finding the balance. You're right. 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 Yeah. 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 So, like, uh, so last uh, last thing maybe is um, what what's your favorite like thing to play because you, you just had a recital right yeah you say, and so you're doing a lot of not only solo but kind of so, more solo-y than mm -hmm. like orchestra and you yeah. said you're you said the baltimore symphony yeah yeah, yeah. so what, like what's your favorite thing to play you know it's really funny because <laughs> last week i was loving playing the recital and then i was thinking oh man i'm so i'm playing with the symphony this week which is really great and wonderful mm -hmm. but i was like oh man, I have to learn an orchestra program and I just want to play more soul music. But then I, I got to orchestra and I was like, oh, I love orchestra music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, chamber music will probably always be my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two people or more, like two, mm -hmm. to, you know, small group, yeah, small yeah. group is really, is really special mm -hmm. um, because you're, you know, still get to work with people yet. You can still retain your own voice. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, I, I played in a, when I was in high school, I played in a fiddle band for a chuck wagon mm. and I got paid 50 bucks a night to serve people biscuits and gravy mm. and play. And that was also really fun. Yeah, so right, it's like, sure. yeah. I don't know. I like music. You know, we were talking yeah. about, you don't know if people, I mean, I like music, so yeah. it's all pretty fun. Yeah. You, you like country. You were talking to me. I still do. Yeah. Johnny yeah. Cash is 
I love his music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really weird. I found that a lot of violin players either do fiddle or classical, and that's mm -hmm. kind of it. Mm -hmm. And they stick to their, their, you know, we could go in a whole discussion of what I feel about orchestra players, and they, their, their noses are very high up in the air to other people, and not, not all of them, but there, there's a, there's a thing with classical players about non-classical music that I won't discuss here, but my opinions on that, but like, I'm really different. I, I do like all of the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I play rock and country and classical and, and jazz and, you know, blues and all, you know, but, you know, but you know. it's really funny. So um, I go also by classical cowgirl, like it's this classically trained and fiddle raised playing Bach to barn burners. So my album was Bach to barn burners. Mm -hmm. So when I was in DC, Bach to barn burners, yeah, people like were that. like, we get the classical part, but what's the cowgirl part? That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I moved to Kansas and they're like, the cow, cow like that's everyone's. Yeah, right, <laughs> it wasn't right, as yeah. cool anymore. Right, all right, yeah, yeah. That's like, come on. Yeah, and. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like we see this all the time. What do you, like, okay, fine. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. So that's that's really cool. Um, la last question for you. What um, what is your overall like? How do you how do you take them through teaching? Like in the sense of. Like, I guess I'll just let you answer, like, what's your goal, like, for a kid, let's say you get them um, fifth or eighth grade, somewhere in there, and then you're taking them through the next two or three years, like, what would you do with them? Like, pieces or technique, or what, what do you do with them? I am a huge proponent of teaching them to be self-sufficient practicers, yes, which means yeah. they have to know how to read notes. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised at how many people don't. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But that's always been the case. I mean, I love playing by ear. It's so good for you, too. But, I mean, they have, in order for them to practice on their own, they have to know how to read notes. They have to be knowledgeable in rhythms. Um, so I start with, I, I always, even new students, I will always assign them a piece. And sometimes it's much easier than pieces I'll work with them on but I'll assign them like their own piece I'm like okay you have to teach me how to play this piece and they're like ooh yeah they're like, I like that they're like what they yeah. like, they <laughs> they're yeah. like, and then you know it, it can be for some it's really hard at first I like that but then a lot we like talk it through together yeah. I'm like you know I help guide them figure out how to teach me and then it's it's great. I, I you know I had a, a newer student who who only knew things by ear and was very far along um, but she didn't know notes and didn't know rhythms and I didn't, and she was very young, very young. So didn't quite have a grasp on even how to explain things. Yeah. Um, and so I really worked hard with that for the first few lessons and I could tell that I was kind of getting her like wearing her down a little bit because, you know, she wasn't able to do what she was good at. I was just playing by ear. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I, after a few lessons, it finally clicked in the lesson where she got it and she knew she got it and she knew why she got it. Mm -hmm. And then she was so happy. Mm -hmm. And it, for me, that was, that just reinforced. I was like, okay, this makes sense. This is working. And I felt really happy about that. So to answer your question, I think I will always include that in my teaching yeah. for sure. Um, and then I at least want them to be competent in knowing their keys and scales and, and technique. Yeah. And I, mm. I just, I think the most, the important thing I focus on though is trying to make it fun so that they like it. Sure. Um, because I know that if, if they like it, it will at least carry them through the sure, hard times. Yeah. So. And as far as I can tell, that's what, my thing is that that's mm -hmm. the philosophy of those the the others that side is that you know if I if they like this then I've got them you yeah know, then I'm gonna take them and if they don't yeah. like it you know. Yeah, and I get that. I love that. Like, teach me how to play this because I've done exercises like that, but I don't do that near enough. Yeah, I obviously tell them all the time to like tell me about what you just played. Yeah, ver verbally, you know, like tell and it was good. You know, yeah, I know. Like, They're like, okay, you know, great, it was good. Awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah, and like, well, what does that mean? You know, and right. they're like, well, you know, you know that that line wasn't very good. I'm, I'm like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. So you've narrowed it down. Yeah, like, what about that great. line? You know, I think and that's like, exactly. And I keep feeding the them thing. questions yeah. and, you know, and they're like, yeah, the ri the rhythm on this line, I can't remember where, but the rhythm on this line, I'm like, perfect. Yeah, it's fine right? if you so, don't know where, but you notice. Yeah, yeah. That is a huge yeah. thing and, when they notice. And like, I've tried to do that a lot. Like I'm asking like 
at least 30 questions, not 30, but a crap load of questions yeah. now. And that's similar to what you're talking about, but you're going a step further with it, with saying, teach me how to play this, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, and I, I had this one kid last or two years ago that went, there was, he, he started, he wanted to go into college orchestra and he did like as a music major. And I was telling him like, they're going to expect you to like go home and like try to figure out what the hell was wrong with this. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're on plane. Like you need to go home and self diagnose and whatever, right. you know? And so we did some exercise with that the last couple months of our lessons is like, and you're talking about, I play what was wrong mm -hmm. and you, and you purposefully in your head, okay, I'm going to totally jack up this rhythm right, right. now and you, yeah. and see if he catches, you know, the, the plus they love it when their teachers mess up. Oh yeah. 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 But I'm going to, I'm going to take that. That's really yeah, good. You know, sure. like that, that's really good. Like you need to not first day, but you know, by the end of you playing this piece, you need to tell me how to play this. Yeah. Teach me. That's really yeah. great. It's cool. I like that. It's fun when they get it too. Yeah. So, um, I feel so bad that you have a channel and we didn't get to do that at the beginning. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's that fine. We should, we should do, do that. Oh, right? yeah, thank you. About it. Yeah. Um, I, my channel's called destiny's musings and I started out doing 100 Days of Practice with Hillary Hahn and that challenge. So I literally had 100 mm. videos in a row. And mm. they were really cheesy. And I would film bird noises and video game noises. And, mm. um, and then it turned into I wanted to become a real advocate for mental health issues. I feel like musicians especially were a special kind of strugglers mm. with life. And so that has really taken off. And so I do a lot of violin stuff still. But I'm also doing a lot of things about chronic illness and mental health and you know, every subscription you would get for this or if I would get for that, it, it pushes the content out there for other people to discover. And I sure. think that's probably your hope for this. So sure. people can get advice on teaching and for their students. And then my hope is people will feel less alone in their struggles and can see that, hey, I mean, I look normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can be crazy and still mm. look normal. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll put the description of your thing Thanks. at the bottom you know, you. so you can find that and uh yeah definitely uh, that's another thing of what i was talking about that that i want to i'm the kind of person that actually wants to help them with their problems yeah. you know what i mean there's yeah. probably some ego there that i think i have all the right answers to but uh but like there there's I'm re i really like psychology and that's definitely yeah. a big uh that's that's a that's a thing today like yeah. a lot of people yeah. are dealing with stuff yeah. you know and uh, jealousy, shame, yes. like, uh, I'm not where I want to be, yeah. you know, what, regret, like, I mean. COVID gave us all uh, yeah. a lot of time to think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there, there was some, there was a lot of nonsense before COVID. Yeah, yeah. COVID didn't, didn't do didn't it. Start yeah, it, it, it didn't start it. It didn't start it, yeah. But it didn't help it, you know, but, um, what else you got? Anything else? This has been great. Yeah. I just, I think it's great that you're doing this. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's really awesome that you're interviewing musicians and you must get so much good information. I've seen a couple so far and I love, cool. yeah, yeah, it's really great. So I look forward to you doing more. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. This is yeah. really great. Yeah, it's it's been fun to interview a lot of people and trying to get the mu music theater people, yeah. teachers, I mean, yeah. you know, everybody on and, and That's do great. And especially not interview the Justin Bieber's or the, the people who are like way up in the stratosphere, yeah. but the regular mm -hmm. people on the ground. And it's been, yeah. been Good. Uh, they've enjoyed it too. So, Good. um, destiny and we're making Good job. Yeah, wow. Yeah. But, uh, thank you guys for watching. That's, that's it. So, um, we'll be back with more episodes, talking to people about music stuff. So. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. That's it, but uh, yep, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Get out of here.